Death Watch. Hi, I'm Chris with Death Watch Productions, and this is episode 12 of A Prophecy of Dusk and Dawn. My usual players are here with me. They'll introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm playing Landon Velox, a young second-born nobleman from the Northlands. I'm currently trying to find some proof that I was ambushed and not to blame for the disappearance of Duncan the Younger, a man whom I hold in some high regard. <laughs> Hello, I'm Travis. I'm playing Hadrius Alinius Ordius, and I am currently heading towards the town outside Castrum Low, and I'm pleased to be in a place where hopefully law and order is the rule of the land. <laughs> and I'm John. They did not attack the old lady. They <laughs> did not attack the old lady. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, John. <laughs> Sorry, I'm John, but if you don't know who I am by now, where the hell have you been? <laughs> this is, I'm uh, Jardine, <laughs> a.k.a. Dane Glass, who uh, may have attacked the old lady in different circumstances. <laughs> she stuck right. around longer. <laughs> we would have worked ourselves up to it. She's lucky she wasn't there in the morning. <laughs> Soup's too thin. <laughs> Get in the pot. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so real quick, I'm just going to share this with you guys i'm changing how we're doing complimentary complimentary complementary skills and augmentation skills to the actual rules as we're written i stumbled across that because i've actually never read the rule book <laughs> and i refuse to <laughs> but i like the way that works um where if a complimentary skill so like listen in the spot thing you're... yeah if the spotting was more important you could still augment it with your listen and mm. it's one fifth of the listen skill okay. and then um that that's augment or no, that's complementary, and then augmenting actually reduces the difficulty if I agree okay. to the, the skill usage. So you could listen in spot, but it would be difficult, a uh, difficult spot check. And I go, all right, roll your listen, and if you succeed, it goes from difficult to normal. So that out of the way, real quick, let's get started. Ah. Uh. Leoden had knelt down on the loamy ground before the squat cot to say the prayers to her prayers to Luna. Outside of the thin tent walls, the call and response of the wolves filled the night air. She could hear a good number of them in the nearby tree line, prowling closer and closer. Occasionally, a grunt or a growl from a much larger beast drowned out the wolves. This would be f uh, followed by the sounds of a snapping tree and, and it crashing to the forest floor. Each of these growls and snaps caused Leoden to jump, interrupting her prayer. At some point, her hands had begun to shake, so she had clasped them together, but now they just ached and her nails had dug into the flesh on the back of her hands. With some effort now, she pried them apart. She looked to her right towards the northern tree line. There, the faint light of Luna's heavily lidded eye cast moon shadows that seemed to stalk and prowl, hunting for her. A spike of fear ran through the young woman. That had never happened before. The shadows cast by Luna's divine light had always been a comfort to her, a blessed shroud that would cloak her and keep her safe. But now the Leshy had twisted that blessing, corrupting it, and as it had the lands and the creatures that dwelt there. Here in this twisted place, Luna was silent to her. Her head turned to the left, and there stood Landon. The wounded boy she had found no more than four days past was gone. In his place stood a stoic lord, hand resting on his ornate uh, hilt of on the ornate hilt of his sword she had uh, been taken by surprise at how quickly his demeanor had changed one moment they had been following the two soldiers talking quietly to each other and then they stepped out into the dried river bed and the boy was gone replaced by this lord a man to whom status and power had been given and he seemingly wielded with ease she had seen how quickly he had brought the other men, or the other man, fields to heal. She, uh, could she trust a man who showed one face only to don another at a whim? Leiden gave herself a shake, breaking away from her thoughts. Now wasn't the time to sow mistrust in her own mind. The Leshy's thralls would soon be upon them. Calming her mind, she prepared to start her prayers again. Before starting, she spared one last brief glimpse towards landing. Landon. 
and a gasp escaped her lips before she could clasp her hands over her mouth. So it is second summer. It's morning. Jardane and Hadrius, you are on the Pilgrim's Road. The tree line is still nearby. Up ahead, you see a uh, in a field outside of the city, you see a, a gathering of people flying the standards and, and heraldry of their various houses, most of whom seem to belong to House Low. Um, um, uh, the city itself had long outgrown the wall that used to surround the castrum, and so now it's fairly sprawling and mostly open. So, yeah, excuse me. Um, and let's see. Yeah. Uh, well, let's uh, find ourselves a place to stay. What do you say, gentlemen? Hold me back, Dane, so I don't charge that army. <laughs> <laughs> hold me back. You better hold me back. I'll uh, take his reins and lead him towards... Uh, no, no, Hadrius. Towards the city. Come on. There will be time for this foolishness later. So, yeah, that's the goal, to to find a boarding house or an inn. Okay. Preferably with a tavern. And out of sight of the army, so Hadrius doesn't decide to uh, charge him when he's in his cups. (laughs) I'm a pacifist, except when I see army. (laughs) (laughs) My Uh, favorite enemy, armies. (laughs) Yeah, but preferably someplace we can wash this road dust out of our throats. Uh, Give me a second here. Um, So, yeah, the, uh, the... Newer parts of Southern Murris, uh, let's see. Southern Murris, that's the name of the town outside? It's Yeah, it's the name of the town in the river, uh, Murus, M-U-R-U-S. Um, uh, it's uh, grown into a multitude of directions, seemingly without care or forethought for the layout of any sort of city planning, save for the fact that nothing obstructs the Pilgrim's Road, right? It, they build up along beside it. Um, as you near the city, you're thankful to see that those armies are a ways off, and they don't seem to be worried about a group of travelers. Um, you can roll spots if you want, or ideas, knowledge, um, command, leadership. I think it's just command in this. Hmm. A praise could work too, if uh, for Hadrius, you get that merchant tile eye working at the army. My eyes fell. Out. Oh. Oh, oh Jesus! Fumble. What the heck? Your eyes <laughs> fell out too. All yes. right. What about uh, Ollie? Are we going to be three blind men? <laughs> Let's see. Can so <clears throat> they they try to look into each other's eyes, <laughs> and it reflects back and forth <laughs> infinitely. That's a, that's a heck of a fumble. <laughs> we fell in love. <laughs> You make a fool out of me. <laughs> let's uh, let's forget this this uh, idea of traveling <laughs> to uh, uh, where we. Ollie going? smacks you both with the butt of the halberd. <laughs> uh, is this where we just like be quiet, Ollie? You don't know what you're talking about. Right? You're fired. We only have yeah. two rooms. Don't yeah. come between love. Ah, you know. <laughs> oh, dang. That RNG at the same time, I think. <laughs> Let's not sync up our roles again in the future. So, <laughs> the the army, uh, the the larger of the armies to you appears to be fairly formidable, <laughs> and you worry uh, uh, for any army that would dare come up against this. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I'll say that out loud with the tone of authority on the matter. All the but then maybe realize it was very stupidly generic credit when uh, I'm done talking. All he's around shamefully thinking like, what the heck are you talking about? They're the same size. No, Holly, I swear they're uh, bigger. No, Ollie's kind of looking odd, like eh, what do you say, boss? Uh then you kinda of hear a mumble, you know, bunch of farmers with sticks. <laughs> okay. So he's seeing not just the size, but the composition where we're just blinded by numbers, basically. Yeah, maybe uh, uh, some of the... how many of them there are. Maybe you're more focusing on the knights, the the higher-ranking right. nobility that are in charge of them. But all he's seeing a group of people that are uh, 
still need maybe another month's worth of training. Right. And then at the end of the day, they're still not soldiers. They're conscripts. They're conscripts with pointy sticks with a middle tip. Um, so life in this part of Natale Solis hasn't been affected by and large by the, the commotion that's been going on. It's f- relatively far away. It still has its, uh, various housemen and armies and militias to protect it. So this area isn't really uh, subject to like the burnings and pillagings that have been going on by the various apparent uh, Mars Oris brigands that have been brought up. Um, Though you do notice that many of the shops and inns and taverns that would line the pilgrims road about every third or fourth one appears to be abandoned Hmm. and you can roll a, Appraise or knowledge slash etiquette, royal court, house low, house velix, Mars Oris, knowledge or idea difficult. Uh, that's for both of you. If you want, pick so one. Try, uh, failed etiquette, etiquette Mars Oris, you said? Yeah, Mars Oris will work. Blinded by Hadrius's <laughs> Success. Uh, beauty. All right. So you've never been to this part of the world, uh, Jardine, or at least with any sort of freedom, right? So. This city looks like any other. It's the newer part of the city. Of course, it's a little bit uh, cluttered and maybe less elegant as opposed to the old town, right? But Hadrius, your various rubbing of elbows in Mars Oris uh, kind of uh, doesn't prepare you, but it doesn't. uh, The state of the old town doesn't surprise you because over the past several, several years, particularly the past. 10 maybe the past decade uh leofric velix and a little bit later on one of his sons have been making uh inroads along with uh magnate baxter cutting out most of the midlands from trade okay uh would have been nice to know that <laughs> before i tried to trade through the midlands well no it means they're desperate oh they want to be for it right. okay. yeah um because what happened was uh, they have uh, begun cutting out most of the land trade and Velix and Baxter are now the sole, um, essentially the sole owners or controllers of uh, spermaceti, which is a waxy oil found in the head of whales. Right. And they also own the shipping lanes. They mapped them. Uh, House of Velix went to great lengths to map the shipping lanes through what's known as the coffin nails. And it's, uh, if you look at the map, N- Natale Solis used to be one giant island with a mountain range in the middle, uh, divided by a river that uh, would, that uh, House Velix, which is in the north, would uh, bridge, right? Right. And when Solar sealed the, uh, the abyss, that mountain range sunk and created that kind of inlet sea. So the mountain range is hidden under the ocean, but it's not, or the sea, but it's not so far down that it Makes is for lots safe. Of yeah, rocky stuff under the water. Yeah. So currently, um, House Velix is kind of starving out the Midlands. Hmm. <clears throat> Don't you forget it. <laughs> that explains the state of the Midlands, House Velix. <laughs> It's going to get worse, too. <laughs> Once his iron fist closes on the southern... Right. Now, didn't we note uh, there was sort of a problem inherent with this because nobody was farming and the Midlands were sort of like a bread basket? Mm-hmm. This, was, this was from sessions ago, but... Yeah. Short-sighted, Alex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad has a temper problem. <laughs> well... Uh, House Velix doesn't have to worry, and neither would Mars Oris because of their low proximity to the sea. Be like Damas Solis. <laughs> yeah, Damas Solis would start running into problems. They're down the valley. Not not a lot of fishing opportunities down there, but like Lockland, he could probably start trying to pick up the, the produce trade. But it doesn't matter because right now, almost everyone's been conscripted in the, the middle right. section. And it's the same kind of up here near Castrum Low is that they've been conscripted. They, they might not be burning and pillaging. That's the problem. But all the workforce is currently training. 
Yeah, I'm worried about it. I've been planning on how I might talk my way out of the next recruitment drive. <laughs> oh, no. You <laughs> see these hands? They're only for... <laughs> but I can write. Henry, you don't want to throw me on some enemy soldier's spear. Okay, um, so I'm seeing all this, but uh, what what do I make of every third tavern being empty? Just depopulation due um, to all the w ongoing war, or probably more economic. Before, right. like these these aren't newly emptied for the most part. Yeah, uh, it's just that there's no money coming through here. This used to be a bustling city because of the Pilgrims' Road, yeah. which. Uh, Many like merchants and pilgrims, hence its namesake, following in the steps of Solar as he rode north, right. uh, purging demons. Uh, this was a very well traveled place, it, but now because of the shipping lanes, it's just kind of strangling, starving yeah. to death. Well, I'll whisper to Dane, I see some opportunities here, Dane. I think we could make quite a killing, but for now, let's just focus on refreshing ourselves and maybe keep your ear close to the road and see what people are talking about when we enter this tavern and uh i'll pick the one that looks busy enough for me because i might have to get down there and go back to the younger version the even younger version of hadrius and play a few games of chance for, <laughs> for money to get my coin base up all right. So yeah, I'm looking for enough clientele that that might be a possibility. So you got one that's average and it's near the gate to Old Town, which is the right. actual wall that would have gone around the castrum. Okay. Uh, well, you know, extended out around it. It the Old Town is the original city that was built. So it's near there. It's called the Pilgrim's Rest, and that's an average priced one. Lots of people recommend it. And the other one is the Shady Bow, which is a bit off towards the east and is built under an old oak tree and uh the city that direction starts getting kind of shady <laughs> well i'll lead us towards this average one and uh take a look around the common area when i come in so okay. see my feel what feel i get of it um so this is an inn and inns while they might offer food in this case um and this being an average one it has private rooms, but for the most part, a lot of the first floor is kind of just an open area with bunks. Right. Uh, some are wider than others, so you can slam multiple people in there, uh, which is a their, common thing. I'll check their prices. Who's who's mine in the shop? Old man. Mm. Uh, clean enough clothes, apron. Baldwin. Hello, my good man. We have but recently arrived, and what are you? What are the rates these days? Um, he says that he will that uh, times are hard, um, so I will uh, gladly let you a room or uh, for one um, uh, denarius. I forget the name of the currency. One average. Yeah. Um, and that will. You, your friends, as well as meals for a day. For one room? Sure. Or we'll you take... can have the common room. I'll... No, we'll take the private room, good sir. Very well. My good uh, man. Excellent. Uh, please follow me. Do you have any horses or? We do, too. Uh, wounded and will need to be fed. As I presume that the feed for the animals is included in the price, as is the custom. <laughs> Actually, um, if you want, <laughs> maybe you once, can bargain if you anymore. want to talk that price down. Yeah, I'll try to. I'll. I'll I forgot about that. Yeah. All right, go for it. Oh well, I thought that that's the reputation I've heard all the way down in Maris Oris. I'm unhappy that that turns out not to be true, but I didn't bargain well enough, right, so I you guess better I'm stuck push with it. it. Nah. <laughs> it is the custom. Push it. <laughs> Ollie, show him the custom. <laughs> oh, no. no I, I got to renegotiate with Ollie, too. That's the third <coughs> order of business. Um, uh, excuse me. Well, I guess he's firm on that price. Yeah. So, so what was the cost for stabling? Um, no, um, it's average for okay. room and uh, stable. Right. So if you had succeeded, I would have reduced it down to cheap. Okay. Well, then I'll ask him what my horses are... Um, 
have minor wounds. Is there someone you could point me to who might be able to look at them here in this fine city? <laughs> um, I think they have a racket going. It's like, <laughs> oh, yes, I, I know just the man for you. He's on the edge of town. And he points off kind of towards the uh, southwest. Follow the Pilgrim's <laughs> Road almost all the way out. He uh, tends to many of the farmers and, and ranchers' uh, cattle. Thank you, my good man. Uh, do you have men to come tend to the horses, or shall I take them out there myself? No, oh, no. I, I will see to it. Thank you. And I'll give him a bow. Mm -hmm. And, uh, wh oh, which way is the room? Oh, yes. I'd like to get settled. Follow me. It leads you up a short flight of stairs, and it's the first door on the right. Okay. And if you need anything, I am at the back end of the hallway on the left. Uh, actually, if before you go, if we could have a... Um, Dane, what do you prefer to drink? Um, White Claw. <laughs> a pitcher of White Claw? Uh, and I mean, just uh, the know, old a, wine. a couple of po' boys. A wine is uh, fine with me. Yeah, if we could have a bottle of wine and... Uh, and then I can uh, spit it out in disgust uh, because <laughs> it's not palace quality. Bottle of wine and some food. Fruit, I think, and bread, if you have it. Um... I do regret that our stocks of wine are potentially not up to your standards, sir. Oh, Solar, bless you. Uh, what is it that you have to drink, then? Well, well we have tea. All right, well, uh, I guess uh, that'll tea, do. please. All right, I'll have one of the uh, <coughs> servants, or the serving boys, bring it up. I can't believe you drop, brought me to a dry county. <laughs> so disappointing. Don't worry, we're well, going to be moving on here shortly. Um, it should be noted that the inns and taverns are different. Right. If yeah. you do want to find a drinking establishment, they're you, separate. Yeah. yeah. The D and D inns and all in one. <laughs> yeah. You could also probably find um, ale houses if you went to a bit more of the shadier side of town and drink there if you wanted. But they are known for you know being a bit more violent. Yeah. So I'll kick that door into our room and. Have a look at the place. <laughs> it's a simple, fairly bare bones, um, single bed, fairly large, meant for uh, uh, taking multiple people, basically. All right. Is there a table? There is. All right. All of you. Have a seat. Let's settle up. Renegotiate. <laughs> We're going to have to go with nothing. <laughs> <All right. laughs> what? Oh, yeah. The That's... new price for you? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Uh, what do I owe you? I'll take care of the old business. He was first. cheap. Yeah. And so we're, we started. We're how many ever days into the new term, right? Mm hmm. Um, so if you wanted to maintain them for this month, it'd be one cheap. Yeah. But uh, I'll go ahead and give him one cheap. And okay. Be like, now, our terms of arrangement have come to an end. You're free to do as you wish. I will, however, be in need. Of a guard, I'm sure, at some point. Probably more, now that I <laughs> have experienced the Midlands. Uh, but here's the thing. You did your job fine. But what I need for what I'm planning is somebody who's not afraid to think. And so what would it cost you <laughs> to, think? to be my guard and to think? Because you made me look like a fool out there when I sent men off to their death. And I'm, I'm humble enough to understand I don't know all things. And I could have used that insight before I sent them out to die. I, I didn't really like the fellow, so I guess it wasn't all bad. Maybe you did me a favor in the end. But anyhow, you have a set of knowledge that I don't possess. How much does it cost to get that out of you, Ollie? I think I was thinking pretty good, boss. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I didn't want to step on your, your toes. Thought. I'm not that kind of guy, or I'm not that kind of man. I didn't come from. Some lords hall. I'm also thinking that a good way to keep a job is to not speak up when your boss is... <laughs> Fair, that is smart. But I give you my assurance that I'll not just fire you out of hand unless you're trying to do me some harm. I want your thoughts, Ollie. I know there's... All right. Roll your negotiation and... Or did you already? No, not yet. All right. Yeah. Um, let me bring up Ollie again here. Dang. It's not working out for me today. He doesn't believe me. Yeah, you can push if you want. Mm, I don't think I will. He kind of 
you see him mulling over. He's kind of uh, walking that coin or along the back of his fingers. And he's like, too cheap. Too cheap? Yeah. That'll buy me your thoughts, huh? Yeah. Two pennies for your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> My thoughts are better than others, boss. <laughs> in, uh, in a particular way, I'm sure that they are. All right. Well, agreed. Then I'll offer my hand. Yeah, he reaches out, shakes it. And while I'm holding his hand, I'll be like, don't let me walk into something stupid again when it comes into matters of, of that thing. I don't know that thing. I know Marasaurus. I know trade a little bit. Like back in the woods. Yes, exactly. That <laughs> and situation. then in the city. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then on the road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where I need your thoughts. Unless you like fighting and you just like us to get in those situations. Uh, that's a problem, boss. I ain't been fighting. <laughs> you like? You prefer fighting? I do. I'd See, I think it's easier if the other person ain't thinking. That's fair. You what you think about that, that, boss? Eh? I, I'll have to think about it for Taps a little his while. head. But I think it might be a little short-sighted. Like I was telling and explaining to Garbon, you can only get so much of it a man once you kill him. You can get a lot more if you keep him alive. Well, but I guess that's true. You'll find out. I could be wrong. If any, I don't have much proof that I'm actually a good traitor in the course of this journey. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, so anyhow, Ollie, the plan here is we're gonna go get a drink. You can come if you'd like, or you can take a breather. I know you didn't get as much rest as the rest of us on that whole journey, and <laughs> and then maybe we'll try to get a loan and some wagons. And some more goods. <laughs> and we'll go from there. All right. Uh, Jarday, anything you want to do? Um, I will. I'll just tag along for right now. I, I don't have, uh, have much in the way of priorities other than to get where we're going. But I will keep an eye out in the town for uh, any any alchemist signs that I can see. All right. So you're going to go for a drink first, or what are you doing? Oh, you're uh, coming with me, Dane? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I'll have to... What does Ollie do? Does he, is he coming for a drink? Is he going to rest? Yeah, if you're buying, boss. All right, well, then I, we... I, got, I just got paid, too. Maybe <laughs> I'll buy a round. <laughs> well, I look forward to it. Well, let's start close to here and sort of work our way All right. onwards. I'll keep it fairly safe for today, hopefully. All right. So nearby there is a tavern. It doesn't have a name. It just has a uh, character. Well, I won't say caricature. It just has two mugs kind of being clashed together, two earthenware mugs. And you think at one point there might have been wine or ale splashing out of them, but time has weathered it, and it appears to still be in service. Hmm. I like it. Names are pretentious. That's fine. Short and simple. They also. Most of the common folk can barely read, so. <laughs> they, they would name it, like, Turnip or something like that. It's their favorite thing in the whole world. <laughs> Radish. Radish. Size of that Turnip. <laughs> <laughs> I come in there just, I, I love starchy. No, bro, you don't love starchy vegetables. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so That's we'll have a, we'll have a look in this one and, and see what's going on. Uh, it's fairly subdued. There doesn't seem to be too many men here, um, but there are some. They're you older usually, right? Uh, probably fifty plus. You'd figure. Uh, the bartender is a a skinny man with a kind of a pinched look to his face. Hello, my good man. What do you guys have to drink here, or what do you folks have to drink here? Mm. Uh, no spirits, ales, wines. Well, if no, you don't about... have any of those, so how are you still open? <laughs> no, I think it was no spirits, period. Uh, Ales, wine. <laughs> Apologies for the misunderstanding. Nothing to drink. <laughs> Nothing we do to have drink. mugs Go that away. you can clash together. <laughs> <laughs> they're one of, those, uh, one of those places where you go to throw plates against a wall. <laughs> they're selling an experience. Yeah. <laughs> not, a, not a product. Um, wine, then, please. A, a bottle. And three glasses. All right. <clears throat> um, no bottles, just from the cask. Oh, of course. My mistake. All right. Man, this mouthy 
dude just like <laughs> arguing with everything. So what asked. happens when you're down here amongst the poor <laughs> in a bad economic town? Uh, what do you want? Well, this. Well, you ain't got it. For a <laughs> round, you're running. Yeah, you have half cheap, cheap, or average, or expensive. Uh, Let's start with the average. All right. That's enough for the three of us? Right? Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say it probably covers a non like uh uh if you're not looking to get drunk you'll right. cover your drinks for that period while you're sitting here yeah just sitting here taking it in seeing what the other people in here are doing the old men sitting around talking about better days there do does seem to be some games of chance that are at various tables uh not dicing so much this establishment is a little too classy that's what i was hoping for. yeah um, but there are some cards that are being dealt here or there, and uh, a chess-like game that you and Giorgio had played. Can I get a sense of what kind of bets they're making? It seems to be like fairly common, um, friendly bets. Uh, essentially, like a little bit more than like penny poker. A, okay. A little bit more, but yeah, it'd be cheap bets. Yeah. Well, after I enjoy. A glass with my companions. I'll go and ask if there's a spot open at one of the card games. Yeah, old man, kind of starting to get big around the middle, but not quite there yet. Uh, laughs and yeah, he's done. And his his buddy's like, oh no, I'm not done yet. I'll get you next time. <laughs> and he's like, no, you're done. Time to let some new blood in, spice it up a bit. Well, thank you. What are we playing? Uh, this guy would be. Uh, well, what do you want to play? To cards or it doesn't. Yeah, matter. we'll do cards. You can yeah. just roll your game and we'll figure it out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Looks like you're one. going. <laughs> got two bets going on. Sure. <laughs> now that I know they're both successes, but all right. So he uh, shuffles these cards out and starts dealing them out, and we'll fade to black on you guys as okay. uh, Hadrius looks over the the uh, top of his cards with a fairly good hand you have some uh you're feeling good about this you think okay. you got it i got sleight of hand too so if i need to cheat i will uh you could have <laughs> augmented or i didn't want to make it a, i didn't want to fail mm. cheating i'm gonna fail what do you call it uh well, good it? old-fashioned way i think the augment you don't need to roll or, or complimentary yeah yeah, I've only read this skill itself. I haven't read those. If multiple it's... skills are applicable. Like sleight of hand. Yeah, so sleight of hand would give you one fifth your bonus or your total skill. Right. To your uh, gaming. Yes, I'll risk the uh, just playing regular for now. Yeah, I don't think you were low enough where one fifth would probably bump you up anyway. All right. Now we head over to Landon. You're standing out in the clearing near the tent. Uh, that you commandeered for Leoden. Uh, from inside, you can hear her soft, desperate prayers to Luna, um, got barely a whisper reaching you, and mostly drowned it out by the howling and the roar of beasts. Mm. Um, and overhead, the last sliver of Luna disappears from the sky, and uh, the sky goes dark, but the clearing doesn't. Because of the fire? Well, yeah. One of the reasons, but there still seems to be moonlight in the clearing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're hearing all this howling and growling. Uh, is it from all directions? Or mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, real quick, uh, give me a religion, uh, knowledge, folklore, or just knowledge, idea, difficult. Sorry. There's a successful religion. Nice. So Luna isn't talked about too much in the Libri Solaris, but she... There is some stuff surrounding her, kind of like the, uh, oh man, like various just folklore that builds up around any religion. So it's kind of becomes tangential to it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the right word, you know, kind of off the side. And so like Luna disappearing from the night sky has a bunch of different significance depending on which folklore you're, you're listening to. But the main consensus on it is, is that it usually means that she has physically gone elsewhere she, so uh, it's a new moon here so it's probably a full moon elsewhere she's watching someone else or she's actually stepped onto terra in some fashion okay um 
And it's commonly believed that Luna has three forms that she takes when on Terra. Uh, the Maiden, the Widow, and the Crone. Okay. Right. And each one kind of has a different aspect to it. But usually they're all about protection and safety. So. Okay. Uh, sorry to interrupt you with that. Um, no, it's all right. So what were you... Yeah, so... Yeah, we, the howling's coming from all around. Right. So then I'll just shout out, you know, to form a ring and stay close to the fire. And and I'll uh, I'll say specifically, don't anybody go chasing after anything. Just stay here with the rest of the group. All right. Take up a defensive posture. All right. Can you roll a spot or a sense? Okay. There's a sense. Success. All right. So, yeah, the men hear you, and they start to form rings around the fire. Uh, save for Captain Fields, these men are armed with spears and shield okay. and short sword in case the, the spear breaks. So they form up ranks. Velix men are used to fighting like that. These are trained soldiers, not conscripts. Mm -hmm. So they're fairly used to fighting in formation, and they take to your idea rather quickly. Okay. <clears throat> Um, but it's around this time that, um, you notice that that light, uh, that moonlight's kind of, uh, growing, it's growing brighter and you, because you rolled sense, you feel a presence drawing near it fairly fast at a blinding pace. Mm -hmm. Um, and your breath has begun to mist like on frigid winter mornings in the North. Uh, some of the men have noticed this and are looking towards you, um, and have kind of fallen out of formation slightly. Like they're staring at you, kind of agape. You know, like, uh, okay. Um, it, well, so then I guess I'll just shout, back in formation, man. Something's coming. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, it kind of looks like it startles them out of it. You have also noticed that the howling has stopped. Mm. Um, whatever it is that's drawing nearer has frightened them off for a bit anyway. Yeah, that's not very comforting. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so then I'll just, you know, so what will I do here? I'll just tell them, get back in formation, and then I will, uh, you know, try to calm them, you know, keep them, I don't know what I would do, leaders uh, or, mm -hmm. or status or... Uh, status would work. Uh, if there is leadership, uh, that would work. Command could also work, but it wouldn't be like morale boosting. If you uh, command, is there leadership? Let's look at this here. I forget. No. Okay, I think it's just command these days. So um, if you want, you can use command to bolster them. And uh, essentially any act that is carrying out your command, I'll give a, a uh, one-fifth bonus to from your command skill to them. Okay. The command's not very good, but I will try it. So, you know, stay in formation and... Look alive. There it is. Success. <laughs> Heck yeah. Now, I'm going to figure that you probably armored up when you got to this part of the clearing. And yeah. Or did you? Or yeah. did you? Okay. Uh, no, I... Yeah. I, well, I thought I had done that earlier. No, you had men carrying your armor because you're still kind of not feeling up to it. Okay. Um, but I figured you being an intelligent and wise player that you are would yeah. want to be armored. Is your sword drawn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have my saber out and my... What else do we got? What is your command? 30. All right. Uh, plus 9 from communication, I guess. So 39. Yeah. 8. So plus 8. All right. So you are getting ready. Um, the tent is off to your left. Okay. It's not near, the, uh, well, it's close, but it's not like near the fire. So it might be something that you want to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a sweet floral scent of honeysuckle fills the clearing. And from the corners of your eyes, you see uh, slim arms aglow with the self-same moonlight of Luna. Um or that fills the clearing, wrap themselves around you, like around your shoulders. Okay. And you feel the weight of this person kind of settle about your shoulders, lighter than a feather, and you feel her lips press up against your ear. 
Um, and where did this come from, this person? They're just suddenly there? They're there. Okay. It's that presence you were feeling. Okay. And a cool, sweet voice that you recognize as the goddess. Uh, she whispers in your ear, uh, Landon Velix of the ancient line of Flumine, I have chosen you, but now I must know, are you mine? Hmm. Guess I never really thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if, anytime you get a chance to serve a infinitely long centipede that crawls around the sky, you should take it. So. <laughs> Just common sense. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one that peeked behind the veil. You yeah. Could have been, you could have been infinitely happy and content. Uh -huh. I would have just seen her as the maiden, but now I'll be like, oh, don't touch me, though. <laughs> that said, the nature and beings of gods and goddesses is kind of nebulous. They're kind of yeah. all the things that they appear to be. So who okay. knows? Maybe you could get drunk enough. Maybe an infinitely long centipede. It doesn't mm -hmm. sound so bad. Right. But no, I, yeah, I will. I'll say, yeah, I, I will serve you. All right. So she lets out a soft musical laugh and then says, then hold aloft your sword, my champion. Okay. I'll hold aloft my saber as high as I can. All right. Into the night. So she leans forward and as she does, her perfect face comes into view. Mm. Uh, this is the face of the maiden. Okay. No, no, uh, single eye and, uh, chitinous exoskeleton here. Um, her perfect face is framed by hair like the blackest of nights. And she reaches out her hand and she taps the hilt of your saber. A, southern ga a sudden gathering of moonlight centers on where she touches and forms Luna's ancient symbol, um, ancient and divine symbol. Uh, Messor, your saber, Mm -hmm. glows cold and pale, now a reflection of Luna as when she appears in the night sky. So it's, um, you know, just, it kind of, when you, how would I, it's, it, oh man, that's a tough one. Um, it just kind of has a dull, distant, cold gleam to it. That's the best way I can describe it. You know, it's not like frothing or frosty. It's just has a kind of a, a distant gleam of, just of skies okay. night skies i guess i don't know kind of make of that what you will the goddess returns to her perch over your shoulder and whispers in your ear once more remember well this symbol the symbol that appeared when she touched the hilt of your saber uh almost started reading from if you had said no <laughs> <laughs> um for under it you shall never fear death nor the bitter taste of defeat when you ride forth from this horrid place, do so with your head held with your head held high, and my sigil upon your banner, for this is the first step of many, my champion, and I promise that w that your footfalls will thunder even in the heavens on high, and your name will echo throughout eternity. But you must take the first step. Okay. So she's. It's kind of a. This is. You need a victory here, and then this victory will steamroll all victories forward it'd kind of be the the gist you're getting of it yeah okay okay all right so when you get a chance um under your weapons just put make another thing or actually you can just do it with mess right now just add an additional 1d3 so it'd be 1d8 plus 1d3 plus one uh yeah okay will it work if i just type that in there it should you can give it a roll if you want to and we can see I think their damage uh, calculation on that sheet's kind of wonky. <laughs> oh. Six so three. Damage 1d8 plus 1d3 plus 1 plus 1d4. That's your size. Okay. Yeah, it's working. Awesome. So I killed her? Yeah. Yeah. Moon is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no moon no more. All right. So you feel the presence of Luna kind of drawing away from you mm -hmm. after she says that. And you feel it kind of begin to drift towards the tent where Leoden was, uh, and still is kneeling in prayer. Um, and unless you look that way, I mean, that's kind of where it goes from there. Yeah. I mean, I'll track my site to wherever it's going. Oh, 
see what happens there. Uh, much like on the faces of the men that were around you, you get the feeling that they didn't see Luna. They mm. saw something, and they even now still stare at you, and some still are some follow uh, a nimbus uh, of light towards the tent, but it, it's like they can't quite see what's going on. And you see that same expression shared by Leoden. Okay. She's not sure. She's feeling a presence. She knows something's there, mm -hmm. but she's not looking at Luna. Whereas you, at this distance, which isn't far, her form's already becoming indistinguishable, vaguely uh, a nude feminine shape. Okay. But you can't quite grasp her actual um, features. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, and you see Luna enter into the tent and uh, a light on the ground in front of Leoden and kind of reach out her hands and grasp Leoden's in him. Okay. And Leoden is looking up at the night sky, well, through the tent, you know, where, where it would be. So she's not actually looking at Luna, as I already stated. And she, you see her like nodding and she's saying something, um, but you can't make out those words. She's still kind of whispering it, but you could do a kind of a, an idea role if you wanted or just no it's private okay uh, I, i'm not gonna try and eavesdrop on a goddess <laughs> that's not wise to do all right but your attention is ripped away as the howls start up again and the light of luna fades from the clearing okay save for where messor shines mm -hmm. that remains okay and that is lighting the clearing in moonlight and uh, you hear a man cry out, they're coming. And okay. you see several fairly decent sized shadows, dog shaped, come rushing out of the woods. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I'll shout. Uh... You can't. You're dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Go for it. <laughs> I'll shout, you know, L Luna will protect us. Stand strong. Fight. Fight with all your might. <laughs> fight for your right uh oh <laughs> you know whatever tell them you know form up and you know do honor to house velox what's your decks yeah it kind of changes mm. it is 14 14 uh and label been playing guitar again and I can't feel anything on my left <laughs> fingertips makes typing hard <laughs> mm. 13 all right 13 and oh thank you all right so how I'm going to do this for you B is Kind of like how we did it with the brigands is for the most part I'll focus on your fight. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the other groups, so the wolves versus fields men, and whoever wins I'll just start dealing damage to kind of a mass hit point total. Okay. There are also ten. Oh come on, ten. All right, so. Fields. Uh, so this is um, what's the word? Um, state uh, stating first. So fields men are going to ready their spears and attack anything that comes within range. Okay. Uh, the bear that hasn't yet entered the field is going to start moving forward. The wolf pack is going to charge forward and attempt to nom on you and the men. Okay. And then. What would you like to do on your turn? Uh, so if the men have their weapons readied and they have the spears, I will be in reserve for if anything breaks through the line. All right. So I can close with it with my saber and try and push it back. But also I'll be holding my saber up high so it provides the light of Luna <laughs> so people can see better, you know. Okay. And you are, of course, still providing your morale boost for them. They, that will persist until you give a different command or they start doing something different other than okay. 
you know, fighting these things. <laughs> All right. All right, so these wolves come charging out of the woods and they crash into the men. Their shields are ready, and wolves are not uh, that great at... Uh, well, no, actually, no, it's not quite true. They are good at tac tactics, but they're no match for shields, apparently. Right. And uh, you hear lots of yelps and cries from the various wolves in the pack, but they kind of dart away or dart out of the, the smarter ones, dodge out of the way of the sword, and then they prepare to start trying to flank you. Um, but if you do want to roll, one does get through towards you. Okay. I will slice at it with my saber. Give a battle cry. So what do I... This one's a big one. All right. So this is... I just roll saber. Mm-hmm. And then eventually it pops up as a failure. Yeah. Can you use power on an attack? Uh, you'd use fatigue on physical stuff, but I'm going to say no. Okay. All right. So this... Uh, big Wolf, the leader of the pack, uh, is jumping at you. He jumped over some of your men in the front row. Okay. And you take a swing at him, and he bites. But I believe... Let's see, location. Right arm. I believe that your, your armor absorbs that. Yeah, my right arm has 5 AP. Yeah. So this uh, pack leader just... Bites down on your your wrist area, and you feel its teeth sliding over the leather and metal that protects your your arm. Okay, and it starts shaking. Yeah, and it's strong. Uh, you'll have to use your saber skill on the next turn to uh, free your arm. Okay. Um. Yeah, uh, Fields is shouting orders for him to kind of close ranks, kind of ball up. So that way there's uh, uh, kind of like a shield in the front and men in the back. They don't quite have the men for it, but they're going to try. And Fields will come over and try to help you out, and he'll attack. He, he'll uh, be going to attack the wolf. The wolves are going to keep doing what works, attacking okay. your men. And the bear will break through into the clearing on this turn. <clears throat> and what do you wish to do? Um, yeah, so I gotta get this wolf off of me, so, I don't know, can I stab it or slash it, or do I have to do something else since it's grappling me? Yeah, you can roll your saber to f combat a grapple. Okay. So you can do that, and it will roll its bite. Actually, wait, I'm sorry, Brandon, I forgot. I didn't give you the option to dodge or parry the last attack. Okay. Do so, please. One or the other. Parry, Failure. use the weapon skill. Yeah, I have it on here. All right. But so, it's a yeah. failure. Now you can roll your saber skill. It was like, you yeah. got a special? It, it was a success. Success. Oh, it's just capped. Yeah, you got a cap on the four. All right. So, yeah, you yank your wrist free from it. And um, hmm, I think I'll let the attack stand. I don't got a problem with that. Okay. So let's not have you accidentally attack one of your own men here. Let's get on the right character sheet. So yeah, you yank this, your saber free, and as you do so, you just run it along the mouth of this alpha wolf. Okay. And as you do, um, you smell fur burn, singe, mm. and sparks, um, kind of, uh, pale kind of white sparks fly from Messor's blade, and it yelps and backs away. Okay. Just in time for Fields to run up. Where is he going to hit it? Okay. Uh, pack four. And he drives his sword into the side of this thing, its upper uh, leg. And that was too much for it. It's, it had kind of started to catch fire, and then... That happens, and you guys down that wolf, no problem. Okay. The fight continues amongst his men, though. There we go. All right. Um, 
the bear comes crashing into your men. It uh, just lets out a roar and barrels across the clearing. And it scatters many of them. That's not actual damage. That's uh, knockdown, essentially. That's okay. how I'm using that. So your line, or whatever defensive formation that you and Fields had been ordering them to take, is essentially scattered. Uh, what was I going to do here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and many of your men are knocked down. And this bear is now standing before you, Landon. Okay. It is large. Uh, it rears up on its hind legs and roars. Uh, it's mangy, patch-covered. Uh, a, a sec an excessive amount of saliva is dripping from its its maw. Uh, it, it's how tall are you? Five ten. Five ten. Yeah, it's about the head and shoulders taller than you when it's doing this. It's a very very large bear. Okay. And if you want, you can roll a, a sense. But I think we took care of it last time. Uh, the the leshy has corrupted these right these beings, and so you you see the twisting corruption running through them okay uh all right so if it's reared up in front now remind me again because i forgot exact details what that blessing of luna does i have it in my powers so the blessing of luna gives you a permanent plus 25 percent or the blessing level to certain skills for the most part okay and it's also the reason why you were healing so fast gotcha so if you want to that blessing of luna you can add a comma and then one slash day uh, regeneration. And that's what that does. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, so about the bear, I've obviously got to attack the bear. Okay. Um, so I know that this sword now, Messor, has some extra effect on these. So I'll be, you know bolstered in bravery by that and uh just if it's standing up i'll just try and no. run, run it through so so yeah the bear's obviously going he's going to try to knock you down and mm -hmm. then step on your head that's right. what bears like to do so yeah. uh the wolves are going to keep attacking most of field's men are going to cover each other so the ones that were knocked over can get back up and then they're going to focus on the bear where they're where possible okay all right so fields has got your back right now all right. All right. So you're going first. All right. Let me swing my saber. Success oh. there. Uh, roll location while I roll his dodge here. I wonder why does it put that black box around the damage there? What is that? Are mean? you in uh, dark mode? Or if, to me, it looks like a blue box. It just means one of your rolls was was max. Okay. One of your damage rolls. All right, hit location. Excuse me. Yeah, if you hover over it, Brandon, it'll show you each individual roll. Yeah, abdomen. All right. So All right. Slice it across its belly. So, yeah, it tries to kind of step back and dodge it. Or maybe it doesn't care. Maybe it's just coming down, aren't you? But um, how much? Eight? Dang. And you see... Uh, uh, the fur just l ignite, and it's that so soft blue or whitish kind of blue flame. Mm -hmm. And as it starts to burn, you see a uh, the skin peel back and fat, uh, just layers and layers of fat open up. But it's now coming down at you. Okay, so I can parry or whatever. Uh, you can. So where is so I can dodge or parry? Where is dodge? Uh, dodge in the black bar. So that's a 40, that's a 50, and parry is still better. So I'll try to parry, saber um, parry. That said, Luna's Blessing at night does offer uh, bonuses to skills that are under her purview. Mm -hmm. So she's a goddess of concealment, beauty, um, persuasion, stuff like that. So dodge would be getting a 25% or her blessings rank right now. And how do I put that in? Um, you would either just, just change it manually, or, uh, a modifier. Or, yeah, the modifier's right there. Let's do 25 and then do try a dodge. Yeah, and we'll see if it upped it to however much. Should be 75. 
Success on the dodge. All right. It looks like it did, 75%. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So if the bear gets a special, uh, you won't be dodging it, but okay. normal. I give, uh, <laughs> on ties, I give uh, success to the defender on dodges and the attacker on if, if uh, they went to parry or. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you must have heard it pretty good and it's off kilter and it just swipes at you with these two claws and it misses. Mm. And um, you, you kind of get the sense that um, Luna is with you and that her protection is is helping you out in some fashion. Yeah. Even though I think you probably could have dodged that one. No, it would have been close. <laughs> yeah, I would have failed if not for her blessing. Mm. Mm, there it is. All right, the alpha is dead. No. Nah. No. Oh. <laughs> The men and the wolves are kind of locked in combat, but it seems like they've uh, gotten smarter. They've adjusted to the lengths of the spears, and they're dodging out of the way, and the men have kind of gotten used to the tactics that they're using. Uh, Fields takes up position kind of on the bear's flank and slashes at it. Fields is all right, apparently. Mm, there it is. Right arm. He does a wide arc with his uh, long sword. And he buries his sword fairly deep up in, like, the forearm type area of this right front limb of the bear. And he does some serious damage to it. You think he could have probably taken it off if he had been a little bit more uh, precise. But you think that he might be suffering from some adrenaline. Right. And that's uh, what, what prevented that. All right. Declarations. The men have now, uh, they're going to form up and continue doing what you told them to do. Mm -hmm. Fields is going to keep fighting with you. Bear's going to try it again. He doesn't like you, so he's going to try to knock you over and step on you. Wolfpack's going to keep doing what it's doing. What are you going to be doing? I will continue attacking the bear. All right. All right, so let me, so I'll attack the bear with my saber. Ooh. Failure. All right. It's close to a whatever you call it. So you're taking a couple swipes at the bear, but it's become uh, kind of like gun shy. Mm. Uh, it knows what that sword does, and so it's kind of avoiding it. Uh, Fields takes that opportunity to try to get his attack in. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Fields. <laughs> <laughs> to the left arm now. So as the bear's kind of walking back, trying to get away from your sword, get away from Messor, he takes that opportunity to kind of circle around it and takes a swing about, I don't know, the equivalent of an elbow on the left arm of the left foreleg. Yeah. And again, he buries his sword pretty deep in the, uh, in the bear, but not as deep as the one on the right. Four, two. And the bear roars and turns its attention to Fields and just takes two swipes at him. Fields. He'll try to dodge out of the way. He has a plus eight to it. <sighs> oh, close. I think, uh, what was it? I said dodge goes to the defender, right? Yeah. Is that a special? I don't see it saying it is. No. And it does say it, right? No. Uh... No, oh, that's a success. I think you had one. It said critical when you critical. I know that. Well, what is a special? Uh, One-fifth the skill, I believe, right, Travis, from Call of Cthulhu? I think it's the same. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think we're good there. So a special would have been like a six. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Fields dodges, and yeah. one of these claws, um, that's a good hit. Yeah. It, it just... Um, rips open one of his men oh <laughs> actually yeah <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> don't mess with the bear. bear's not playing around Th this is a grizzly yeah and yeah. it's a capped bear so <laughs> yeah that's um that i was kind of laughing at the skills because they're all like 30 yeah and it's like well if i'm using the bear appropriately it, it's kind of over if it hits you so yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, it brings this claw down on one of uh, Field's men and just you, you just hear metal 
uh, rend as it's not rending, but as it's ripping apart the leather, the snap of leather straps and yeah. and cloth, and it just goes through the ring mail and lays him open pretty good. He screams, um, and uh, he dies. <laughs> he starts thrashing on the ground. All right, um, fields. So the wolves and the men continue their fight. There we go. Uh, declarations i'll continue uh, with the bear yeah everyone will i think will be doing about the same all right so go all right so yeah so it's turned its attention to field so i'll take that opportunity to attack with my saber all right that's a success there roll your hit location the bear will try to dodge be right leg all right right leg Oops. Uh, so you get a glancing blow on the bear. You you see the fur light up, but uh, you think it soaked most of it. Yeah. Fields is looking kind of... Um, uh, after seeing what that bear did to his man, he's going to take a more defensive posture. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he's a captain. He, does, he doesn't get paid enough for this. Yeah, it's understandable. <laughs> But his men will continue fighting the wolves. They're kind of uh, starting to uh, split up. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know if that... <clears throat> and the wolves seem to be more uh, nipping and jumping back. That's kind of what they've started doing. They've taken some pretty good wounds, but only that one alpha has been dropped so far. All right, and the bear. Roll of luck. Someday it'll pop up. Oh, it's being slow. Oh, right. Look at that. So the bear lets, lets out a roar towards fields and kind of does like a a hop his direction, you know, kind of like a... a little faint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, suddenly turns about towards you and just comes at you with two claws. Okay. All right. So you compare your dodge. The first one will be at full and the second one is at a minus 20. Okay, so we'll try the first dodge here. All right. And then the second dodge. Come on, you can do it. Ooh. Um, so, blesses, blessings to Luna. Mm -hmm. You feel these two claws just swipe over you, and you can feel the power and the wind, that the rushing of the wind as these claws swipe at you. One hits another of your men, and you see his arm just essentially leave his body yeah and he gets thrown and another crashes into a bunch of or a couple wolves and they are their hind quarters are just rended rend uh, rended mm -hmm. and become made useless okay and the bear's roaring and spittle is flying from it declarations bear's going to continue attacking you unless you want to roll luck uh yeah, I'll continue to fight the bear. I don't see what other options I have here. I can't outrun it, so but how many men are standing? Uh besides fields, six, seven. And how many wolves are left? Some have started to flee, but there were initially twenty. Okay. And uh their numbers have kind of started to thin out, but it looks like they're trying to separate your men from each other and circle them. All right. Yeah, so I'll continue to fight the bear, but I will shout to close the ranks. You know, remind everybody to close up ranks. And... All right, so um, uh, commands, I'm going to say, happen at round 14. Okay. And then if you want to attack, it would happen later. It would happen uh, oh, well, six strike ranks later. Uh, yeah. All about the attack. Yeah. Now, it would still happen the same turn, right? It's just that at 14, you would give your command oh i see what you're saying okay yeah, yeah. and then essentially you'd minus uh when is it oh, i'm gonna say six you'd minus six from it and then okay you would uh get your attack all right and it's the same yeah. like if you have multiple weapons or if your skills over 100 with a sword you can get two attacks mm -hmm. the first attack would happen at 14 and yeah. then the second half attack would happen six strike ranks later okay so is that what you want to do yeah all right so Roll your command. Success. Excellent. So you've issued a different command, but they will attempt to follow it. And so they'll continue getting their plus six. 
Oh, that's why Fields is rocking it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, or they're plus eight, sorry. Um, the wolf pack will lay into your men or attempt to. <laughs> Spear, there it is. Yeah. Uh, roll a 1d6 uh, for me, Brandon. 1d7. 1d7? Yeah. Is that what you said? Seven. All right. That one. Uh, so you see uh, Theo getting his arm nommed on, but it doesn't look like it's getting through his armor. One of the soldiers that. Yep. Okay. I remember Theo. All right. So now the bear's turn. The bear's going to swipe at you twice. It's actually going to swipe once and bite. So it fails on the swipe. And the bite. And fast now he... as fast can be. You'll never bite me. <laughs> All right. My turn? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll slice at the bear. Let's see. Where are you? Mm-hmm. All right. That's Roll. a success there. Roll hit location. To the left leg. Left leg. Nick Fields hit that one before. Mm-hmm. Um, no, he hit the right leg. Oh, okay. Uh, he hit the left arm. <laughs> leg. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So you uh, dance under one of these swiping claws, dodge a bite, and then you strike out with your with Messor, and you plunge it into the bear's uh, left hind quarter. All right. Declarations. Bear's gonna keep attacking at you. Yeah. Right. So let's keep going with that. All right. Your men attempted to rally on their turn, and they've uh, maintained their bonus. And the wolf pack is starting to kind of look demoralized. It's looking like they might rush off back into the woods, but something is kind of pushing them. Mm-hmm. Roll your attack. All right. Let's see, success there. 14 damage. Roll placement. Ooh, it fumbled. Okay, so... Hit location, abdomen. All right. You have hit there before. Mm-hmm. All right. So just in case you're wondering, it is not enough to cut the bear in half. <laughs> I was not wondering. Okay. There isn't a lot of imagination power I have for... Well, if you had... Was it? Uh, it was, I think it's three times, so eight times three, whatever. 24. Uh, 24. If you had... Uh, Hit it for that, it would have destroyed in the, the location. So, yeah. I'd be like, I chopped a grizzly bear in half. No big deal. <laughs> but it did not. <laughs> but it does uh, drop it. The bear was charged. It stood up on its hind legs again to start swiping at you, and you ran your uh, ran Messor up from kind of one uh, hip location up and across it. Yeah. And you spill out its uh, intestines out onto the ground. And it's kind of standing there, grunting, mm-hmm. and then it just falls sideways over to the ground. And roll a sense. Success there. All right. Something about this bear was different. Not just that it was corrupted by the Leshy, but the Leshy's presence was in it mm. when it was killed. And killing the bear drove it out back to wherever it's hiding hiding hole is okay and it also broke its immediate hold on the wolves not its long-term hold but the thing that was keeping it there right so now many of the wolves kind of stop their actions in confusion now uh, you can't really read a wolf's face but you figure that's what you're seeing and many begin to dart back into the tree line all right uh fields gives you a a nod at following the bear uh, you see that you've earned his respect. Not that you wanted to particularly. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I don't dislike him. It's, it's important that he know <laughs> who's boss. You know where things stand. You know when you're in charge of people, if you set the expectation early, often you never have to set it again. You know. I'll remember that. What if you have a a goddess by your side giving you the thumbs up? Does that help? Or it does. Okay. Yeah. All right, so what are you going to do? Um, essentially, combat's over. The men are mopping up the ones that don't want to flee, but most of the wolves are fleeing now that the Leshy's hold isn't 
binding them to that area. Yeah. And this was a pretty big clearing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big enough for uh, a group of nobles who would be camping. So there's enough space for a small pavilion mm -hmm. tent. Well, I'll go check on Leoden. All right. Let's see how she's doing in there. She is not there. No. Oh. No blood, but she is not there. Okay. I will... I don't know. I guess I'll start looking around and use my sense and see if I can gain anything, any determination on where she might have went. Yeah, go for it. And I'll say, the woman, anybody see where she went? Uh, immediate replies of, no, my lord, no cap or no commander. Mm. Well, I don't, yeah, I failed on my sense right. there. So, so, um, your senses are not specifically clouded, but her presence is clouded mm -hmm. by, uh, faint traces of Luna's meddling. Or maybe you don't view it as meddling, but Luna is obscuring Leoden's traces. Okay. Not particularly just for you. Right. But just in general. Okay. So. So I can just assume that Luna's in control of that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and then I guess I'll go start seeing to the men and see what aid I can give to the wounded or whatever. All right. Um, do you have first aid? Mm hmm no. Well, where would it be? That's cool. I believe it's like top middle. Or is it, yeah, top middle set of skills. Let me double check. Yeah, I, I mean, I have an 18 yeah. plus 13, so yeah. Yeah, you're it's actually not pretty decent. And um, like that's lower than what it would be because they want to have it um, start at a 30. And mm. It's like first aid isn't really a thing in this period. So I've made it just your base intelligence, intelligence times one. So yeah, if you want, you can roll that. You can help out. Yeah, I'll see what... Uh... Uh, you can also roll mm. uh, your first aid as a knowledge or any um, medicinal or, uh, yeah, uh, skill idea, a difficult idea or no roll. No. Uh, not for the healing, yeah. but for other stuff. Well, I just you know, I'll roll the first aid and assume that some these wounds are just beyond my limited. Yeah, well, this is a separate thing from that. the The wounds are beyond your ability to to render first aid to. Okay. But this is another roll that I'm asking for. Separate. You want from a that. no roll? It would be a difficult no roll. Yeah. Okay. And remember to remove your bonus from Luna for that. Yeah. Success there. All right. Um. The house Velix is a hunting house, both on land and at sea. Um, you know that there is a a sickness that takes some animals, and it is transmittable to men. Oh yeah, and, like rabies. And you are worried about um, that because the bear definitely mm -hmm. was rabid, as far as you could tell. Many of the wolves seem to the ones that you got a clear look at. Um, so, um, you don't know how to go about it because your first aid isn't high enough. Yeah. But, uh, there are many different folk remedies for taking care of it. A simple and easy one that comes to mind, even without a successful first aid role would be hair of the dog, or in this case, wolf that bit you, mm -hmm. uh, in which fur is taken from the wolves that are rabid, placed into the wound and then bound up. Okay. Um, uh, there's a lot of, uh, like for like yeah. in this era. So fighting the infection with something that would cause the infection. Right. Um, but this is honestly more the purview of Leoden. Yeah. That's the thing. It would be wonderful if <coughs> Leoden was here, but I mean, since I can't help with the wounds, but I do know that there is that risk. Um, you know, I guess I'll give a few shouts into the darkness and see if, Leoden will hear me, you know. Uh, in a pinch, cauterization yeah. might work. Okay. So you might have to have some men bite some leather or a stick and yeah. put a brand to wound. Okay. Um, do you have fields go about seeing to that? Or? Yeah, I mean, they're his men, so. Okay. All right. So while they begin to do that, you cry out into the yeah. the night for Leoden. I'm hungry. And... Uh, 
just the rustle of leaves answer back. Okay. Well, that's very frustrating, but I will, um, I will tell Fields that it, f- whatever he's decided for treatment of these wounds, that he needs to put some of the, the hair of the wolf into them before he does it. Mm. I mean, it's the best I can do. Mm. I mean, I honestly don't even know if that's like, I mean, I know people think that. I don't know if it's actually true, but we got to try something. Right? Mm, okay. You're so, still in character. Yeah. I was like, man, like Brandon, like we got the internet. We know hair of the dog. doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he salutes you and an and earnest salute and it'll be done commander. And, okay. uh, he turns around and begins issuing orders Yeah, All as right. well as, um, having a chunk of the men that weren't wounded prepare for, uh, watch duties. Yeah. And you now have an empty tent if you wish to sleep for the night. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I will. Maybe we can find some tracks in the morning to see where she went. I don't know. Maybe Luna took her up to her centipede den or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for men to know the mind of God. <laughs> centipede women. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll end with, um, we'll actually, I think we have to call it. Um, we'll end with, uh, you laying your head down for the night, the, uh, glow of Messor fading and, uh, muffled screams from your men as brands are placed into wounds and fields uh, shout, not shouting, but giving orders in a, a strong, firm tone. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's where we'll have to call it for today. Okay. Thank you guys for playing. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you. You know that's what, Brandon? It's the 29th when next we play for you. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Roll against all your skills. Okay. It'll be a 1d4, just like always. Yeah. Uh, everyone else, roll against one of your skills. This has been a Death Watch production. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.